Welcome back. So we're talking about data science. This is an intro overview lecture series on kind of what is data science, how can you use it, what are the aspects. And one thing I think is just really important to emphasize is that data science is not new. We've been doing data science as humans for hundreds, thousands of years, collecting data, modeling the world through that data. Um, and I, I think data science uh, as a terminology means different things to different people. So there's what I like to think of as data-intensive science, data-intensive engineering, or data-driven uh, inquiry. And that's science that you do based on data. Okay, like if I want to solve, so astronomy is a great example of something that is data intensive science. I think of, of the phrase data science, this is an emerging scientific discipline which is motivated by data intensive science. But it's really the science of how do you handle data, collect, clean, store, visualize, and model with data. So it's a little confusing. Uh, you have data driven science. And that motivates this whole new field of science and engineering called data science. And I'm going to use them interchangeably, uh, but that, I just want to kind of deconflict those two terms early on. And astronomy is a great example. I want to walk you through just this very interesting history example that I love about um, kind of Tycho Bray and Kepler and Newton to give some idea of what data science looks like in a historical context. So this is Tycho Bray. A uh, great Danish uh, astronomer who collected the rich data set of the motion of planets and stars that was critical in Kepler's uh, discovery of his, his ellipses and planetary motion. So, to some extent, Tycho Bray was uh, noticed inconsistencies between the models of the time kind of the, the, the old models of, of how the planets would move. And he noticed inconsistencies with what he observed. So, you know, he, there was this predicted conjunction of planets and it didn't agree with the models to his satisfaction. And so he realized this, I think, was as a teenager that he needed to collect rigorous, clean data to store it in a systematic format and to, uh, to, to make a science out of the data collection of planets and stars. And he, he de dedicated his life to this. He had uh, an island between uh, Copenhagen and Sweden. I don't know if you can see it here, but this is his science island of, of Venn, where he collected all of this rich data. And uh, he, he guarded this data. So this was his life's work, and he knew how much value. And it turns out Kepler didn't even really have full access to the data uh, until Tycho Bray passed away. And so, so both of them knew the value of the data uh, in kind of moving, moving the theory uh, of, of planetary motion forward. And this was a critical piece uh, in Kepler's famous law of the elliptic planets, uh, elliptic motion of planets. Um, fun fact about Tycho, very interesting character. I encourage you to read more about him. Um, he lost the tip of his nose in a duel when he was a young man arguing about who was a better mathematician. Uh, on his science island, he had a pet moose, which was apparently very fond of, of beer um, and would entertain his guests by drinking a tremendous amount of beer. So, so Tycho Bray is a really interesting guy. Uh, you can only imagine what his personality would be like. He had to, um, you know, he made his life's work of very, very, very careful observations, which changed the world forever uh, through, through those who came after. Uh, and I, I think this also laid the foundation. So this, this data intensive inquiry laid the foundation for what Newton would go on to do. So Kepler described these elliptic motion of the planets and Newton explained why the planets move in these ellipses. And, and actually I think a great, uh, a great quote by Isaac Newton's, Newton when he was explaining one of his theories, he said that it was because of a preponderance of the evidence. And that's another way of saying the data supported his hypothesis or his theory. Um, and something else I think is really fascinating uh, that we should think about as data scientists and modelers and machine learning uh, people today, um, and this is something I talk a lot about with my colleague Nathan Kutz, um, is this idea of the difference between Kepler and Newton. 
So Kepler built a model of how things work the way they work on these elliptical planets. This is kind of, I think of an attractor of how, how the world and how the, the solar system works in these elliptical orbits. That theory was useful, but it wouldn't have allowed us to, uh, to develop the Apollo program and, and put, put people on the moon. Okay, and so what Newton did was somehow a generalization. He distilled the abstract physical principle that gave rise to elliptic orbits, but in a way that could tell you what would happen if you left your elliptical orbits. What would happen if you left uh, or pushed on the system out of the way that it, it always behaves and we've always observed it? And his theory truly generalized. F equals MA generalized in a way that allowed us to, to land people on the moon, which is, which is really a huge achievement. And so we talk about this a lot. A lot of machine learning algorithms today, most of them, I would say, do what Kepler did. They describe the world as we observe it, as the data describes it. And it takes this epiphany, this great leap uh, to get a model that truly generalizes like what Newton did. And so we should be aspiring to make our algorithms go you know, from Kepler to Newton. And that, that's a, a worthwhile goal. It's also very, very challenging. Okay, so data science has been around for a long time. There's a really uh, interesting modern book called The Fourth Paradigm, Data Intensive Scientific Discovery, which basically shows uh, or, or describes this progression from kind of theory and analytics, mathematics, to experiments, collecting data um, from, you know, running experiments to test hypotheses, to simulations and numerics and computations, kind of the, the digital, you know, silicone age. And now this fourth paradigm of, of data-driven inquiry and scientific discovery. Really interesting uh, and, you know, how this complements, this doesn't, this doesn't displace theory or numerics or experiments, it complements. These generate massive amounts of data and we need a science um, that, that ties these together. Okay, just like simulations didn't displace experiments, they complement each other. Okay, uh, so that's just a very high level overview. I will point out for those of you who are uh, kind of more interested in the nuts and bolts of machine learning and modeling and kind of the linear algebra and optimization underlying these data science algorithms, uh, I'll recommend a book that my colleague Nathan Kutz and I just wrote, Data Driven Science and Engineering uh, in Cambridge. And we have a website, databookuw.com, where we filmed up all of our lectures for all of the chapters and sections. Uh, so for example, you can go to our website and find you know, different topics you're interested in and see our, our YouTube videos. So if you're interested, hopefully that's a resource uh, to kind of get into the more uh, nitty gritty mathematical aspects. Okay, thank you.